Jeff lost Herbert Slee from Creatively on Sunday the 10th of September 2023 with Frosttube number 193. Welcome, welcome back to my weekly YouTube channel about counter cross stitch and random other stuff. Uh, how am I doing? I'm alright. Um, am I still a little bit broken? Yes. Am I still having on and off issues with me? You trace whatever the hell me tubes are called, me Etruscan tubes. Um, so it's getting better. It's just still not 100% right still. Um, and my back is getting better, but it's still 100% right still. And I still get every now and then a freaking spasm in this muscle on my right side, which catches my breath. <laughs> um, no rhyme, no reason. Thankfully, it doesn't hurt when I'm in bed and relax. It seems to be only when i am got the whole gravity thing happening. Um, so I don't even know. But I haven't taken any drugs since, like, last Saturday. No, last Friday. Friday week. So, you know, it's better. And I'm not taking any painkillers or muscle relaxants. So it's probably, like, a lot better. But it's still not 100%. And it sucks. And then last week, we had a little departmental restructure announced and it was bigger than what anyone had anticipated and like a good bunch of people that um their roles gonna be their roles are gonna be just established and a lot of what they do not really replaced and I don't even know I don't even know I'm just over it <laughs> I've been at the same organisation for over 18 years and have been through five or six, I've lost track, you know, organisation-wide restructures, at least a dozen uh, sort of smaller team restructures, realignments, whatever they want to call them, and um, then, you know, a bunch of sort of IT-wide ones. And I'm just like, I don't know. The work doesn't really change, but it's just frustrating. And so my role is unaffected, but like directly, but indirectly it's affected, right? Because there are people that are on my projects that are needed and then their roles aren't there. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, kind of motivated to look for something else i need to increase my income the only way to really do that to change jobs so we'll see what happens anyway um yeah so work's just like a lot going on <laughs> and this extra stuff and we're about to go to an election and it's the worst time like it's such a you know gov any government stuff's a real like, government is kind of goes on a sort of weird, still got to do stuff, but you know that an election will change policy and you'll have some 100-day plan that comes out. So it's this weird time where you kind of know there's going to be change depending on what the government looks like or depending on how much that change, what direction that change, what things we stop, what things we start, what things we have to change. Um, and the job market's weird, so it's just like a really crappy time. Enough about work. Um, I just, oh, if only I didn't have to work. <laughs> uh, Dad checked in with him just before doing this, what is it, just um, half past 12 on Sunday. Um, and he's okay, he was out in the garden planting things, so nothing like being optimistic. No, he was getting some veggies in. Um, the season up there for planting starts so much sooner than here. Like he's talking about his plum tree has been in blossom and his um, apples starting to make fruit. And we're like, um, we don't get apple blossom down here in Wellington for ages. Um, I mean, my peach tree is not anywhere near blossoming yet. So, um, yeah, they're just like, gosh, they could easily be six weeks ahead up there. But we can still get a late frost, which last year bugger all his plums up. Um, so that can be something to be said for your fruit, your trees, 
fruiting later because then that last frost doesn't get you. Anyway, he's okay. Um, last week, other than work and feeling sorry for myself, um, I didn't do anything fun. I went to the library, got some books out that I had on reserve. Um, I did a bit of a tally. Uh, I kind of keep a little little list that I don't really care, but I'm always interested. And I've read, as of last night, or at one o'clock this morning, I've read 88 novels this year. Um, now a lot of them have been shorter urban fiction, kind of read them in one night read them in one day kind of books. So, you know, really easy, good stuff for commuting. But still, um, that does help explain why I'm doing less stitching and watching less YouTube because I like reading books. I don't like listening to books. I find I don't listen to the books. And then I'm like, well, I, didn't, I have to listen to it again and I still don't listen to it. So I'm not good at audiobooks and... Um, if I'm listening, I prefer to listen to music or podcasts. So I, when I read, all I do is I read. Um, but I've been reading more on the train and reading more um, when I take a break at work rather than scrolling. So yeah, read more, scroll less is my 2023 thing, apparently. Have been watching a little bit more Flosh Tube the last week um, with being out of here again most of the time. Um, and so I... As much as I'm a completist and struggle with the fact that I haven't watched people's back, you know, missed I've missed things, I can't go back and watch past episodes, um, especially when increasingly people seem to be doing hour-long episodes. So, um, but I've been trying to catch up on, as someone pops up that I, I enjoy just watching their most recent one to catch up and letting go of the fact that I've missed two or three or four because I have to let go of that because I can't go back and watch all the people is too much to see. And yeah, thoughts for people in Morocco. I talked briefly to my friend Moha in Morocco, my tour leader from when I went to Morocco, which was crikey. Oh, when was that? 2012? Holy heck, has it been 11 years? Um, so about this time, 11, yeah, 20. Yeah, it was two years after mum died, so 2012. Um, I was in Morocco, and it's amazing, I love Morocco, but um, yeah, they had a terrible earthquake, um, 6.87, depending on which version of the um, ma uh, science you follow, um, and yeah, lots of people dead and um, displaced and stuff. So luckily, you know, thankfully, he and all of his loved ones are safe. He is based in Marrakesh, but is from and from the Atlas Mountains, and his family live in the Atlas Mountains. So um, all all areas that are affected. So, but um, he's safe. So that's good. But yeah, pretty, you know, pretty scary. Not a common occurrence for that part of the world. But um, whereas they are very common here in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, I really feel for them, so for the people of Morocco. Okay, that's probably enough of the public service announcements. Uh, I did get one new thing in this week, a new old thing, a secondhand ch chart that I bought off of one of the New Zealand um, Facebook de-stash sites. Just this one. It's not a reproduction, it's a... <laughs> I was going to say purpose-built, <laughs> um, a modern design um, sampler called, what is it called? They weren't too good at naming stuff back in the olden days, 1991. So it's by Dawn Lewis. It's just called the Needles Work Sampler. It has a sort of a saying that I might change because I might want to make it shorter. Um, we cut to fit it on a fat quarter of a higher count linen because it wouldn't fit on a fat quarter of 27 count, which is what it's charted for. It says like the needles work shall always be mine, my heart, my soul, my stitch through time. So if my sampler you can see, take care, dear child, and remember me. Um 
has a quite a has a has a quite a few has a quite a few specialty stitches or embroidery stitches through it. It's one sixty eight by three seventy eight, so it's quite a big in charted in DMC and Anchor. Uh, and on thirty count, so thirty counts to say I did on, yeah. Because of the specialty stitches, I probably want to do it on thirty two count, um, which I'd managed to fit on a fat quarter, just with a really small, like a probably inch and a half maybe border. But I kind of don't have any fabric. I don't want to buy any fabric. I don't have any 32 that I would want to use. So I did pull a few fabrics from my stash out of 36 count that probably most of the specialty stitches would be okay. There's a bit of satin stitch, which is fine. And it's the rice stitch is probably the one that's the gets a little bit tight on the higher count. Um, and then there's other stitches like herringbone, which is fine, Montenegrin Montenegrin stitch, double runny stitch is fine, Italian cross stitch is fine, long arm cross stitch is fine. It's mostly the rice stitch, you're gonna lose a lose a little bit of the detail doing that. Although it is over four threads, so it's probably still fine. Anyway, I don't love the motto necessarily, I just love the style of sampler, so um I don't know, but I pulled 36 from my stash. One was a brown sugar by Fibre on a Win, which I think is a good contender. Although I feel like I've started three things in a row that have this kind of mauve grayish tone. Um, this has a bit of green in it though. I've got number 12 Stitch Co Salted Caramel, which is a bit yellower. And also, this probably won't, but I've got 36 count brick from Fibre on a Whim, which I would probably change the colours quite a bit. So I don't think I'll do brick though, but they were just three that I have fit quarters of. I'm edging, I'm moving towards this one and just making it work on that kind of more mauve sort of fabric. Um, I don't know. It's gonna go in the stash, and maybe I'll wait till I get some 32 count in in the future, just to. But yeah, I kind of like the whole dear take care dear child bit. Like I'm probably would just find a different, like phrase that I could, pop in there and, um, look at taking. That row out, and. Instead of where it says wrought by here, put the name and the date in here and just lose this bottom out, um, set of numbers. So that way would kind of reduce it by, uh, that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, by about 22 to 25 stitches, which would be... Um, it just give you that extra inch, basically, um, to fit on a fat quarter. Anyway, I bought that, so I can't remember who I bought it from. It doesn't matter. Yay. <laughs> so that's all I've got new, because I've been really good. I'm trying to save money, also mortgage rates are, um, you know, likely to increase again for me. Um, what did I stitch this week? So, carrying on with the hashtag stash sampler starts. I had start number six on Sunday, which was Jeanette Douglas Designs, the common thread stitcher, no, the common thread two. This um, chart was a past the stash from Susie, and I've kitted it all up with, um, majority of it with my own silks for you so the color palette will be brighter i think than this uh, it's on 32 count cream linen from swagger using again my own silk conversion and i started it on sunday and i basically got two parts done it's broken into sections or two sections done uh, i should put this behind it 
um, and so the bottom alphabet is done and which includes um, Algerian eyelets each of those little blobs is an Algerian island basically you stitch the alphabet with the variegated thread for me wasn't the one called floor and then it just said to stitch the eyelet with the color that kind of is predominant within that letter so kind of got three colors a blue a sort of sagey green and a violet for me um, and then the second part I stitched was the Vigello piece and again um, just to show you my color palette how much brighter it is um, it's a lot brighter but it's quite fun I quite like it so yeah that was kind of fun so I stitched the um, very pale um, border kind of in the full crosses and then I popped it into my Nuge frame and went round and round and round with my satin stitch and apart from the fact that I started it initially in the wrong place because I didn't look at where this was placed I assumed it was on the edge of that it wasn't it was one box up so I got all the way around to here with the outer line and realized I had to frog it so I stitched part of that twice but yeah I'm really happy with how that came out just one strand of silk it is um a little sparse but when you look at the model picture it is sparse because it is um the model is also stitched with one strand of silk on 32 count and just the colors um I do like the darker sort of lavenders. Mine is edging more towards violet, but I don't mind. So yeah, very happy with that. That was probably four days stitching on that. So I'm quite pleased with it. Next up, I think I'll come over here and stitch like this bit, these sort of bits here, and then that bit and then anyway, I'll be half done so yeah I guess it's I mean there's a lot of just plain cross stitch in this it's pretty quick alphabets are quick to stitch I find um but yeah get get sort of this in and then the stitching before I do the white work in here so that was start number six then I um had a, I don't know I had a day off <laughs> and then um, decided I hadn't picked up this for a little while so I picked up the Moroccan sampler um, little did I know then poor old Morocco was gonna have an earthquake it was not a correlation at all I'm sure um, but cliffside stitches so this was a chart I bought off of Etsy a really long time ago and I'm stitching with my own conversion DMC conversion on 36 count persimmon from Fibre on a Whim. This was a 50 at 50 start near the end of the year. I think I started on like Moroccan Independence Day. Oh yeah, I wrote that down, Moroccan Independence Day, um, which was the 18th of November. Um, and there's so much stitching in this. I thought I would be able to finish this this year. I, I could if I didn't stitch anything else, but I got a little bit done. Um, I oh, I should show you what it looks like first. It's so pretty. I love it on this color. This you know reminds me of the pink. Oh, they call Morocco oh, Marrakesh the pink city, and the color of the sandstone, which is you know now significantly damaged from the earthquake. Um, and I changed the colors that made they made me feel more like the colors of Morocco than what was charted. It was charted for a little bit too primary for my palette. Um, so I stitched this box, this box, this box, and this box. So those four are almost done. I realize I left a little bit of blue, a little triangle of blue out of here. I'll pick that up next time. Um, I filled in a bit more of this border and I pulled all this border all the way up from there. So, um, just, yeah. It was a good day, good evening stitching on this, and I, I think I did two evenings on this. 
I don't think my maths is going to work out. I'm going to tell you that I did, <laughs> since Sunday, four days on the Jeanette Douglas, then one day of no stitching, two days on this, one, and then we've got two more projects. So the maths doesn't work out. I don't know how much I stitched. Definitely a, I think I stitched on this on Friday. Um, I finished work, was working from home, finished work and put on, decided to watch a couple of favourite movies. So I watched like The Help and something else. I can't remember. And then went to bed at 8.30 because... I felt like reading, so I went to bed at 8.30 and read till 1.30 because that's what I do these days. Anyway, that's that done. So I'm glad I got a little bit more work done on that. I, you know, I've got too many projects to chip away at everything, which is um, doesn't help when you start eight samplers in August and September. Then yesterday, Saturday, I thought I need to do some of my monthly projects because we're in a new month. So I picked up The Stitch Goddess um, by Tiny Modernist. I'm stitching this in a stitch along, <coughs> excuse me, with um, Judy and Aussie in a Kiwi world. I haven't caught up with Judy for so long. I haven't I haven't joined a Friday night stitchy chat f since before I went away in July. And that's like, I think it's been like nearly three months because I've been sick. Or my back's hurt or I've gone to bed at 8 30. Um I don't know. But anyway, I am stitching this on 35 count ocean blue from Country Stitch Linen using um mostly the core for DMC, a few changes. And I've been stitching, I started this on New Year's Day and I've been stitching approximately 10% a month. I left everything, I, went, I was leaving her here to the last. Um, so last time I had a little bit of dress to do, a little of the cream down here, um, and the moon and her flowers. So basically that's what I stitched on yesterday. So I've stitched on everything except her hair. So it was only about 7%, so I did, did wrap it up. I've got 13% to go, which I plan to finish in October. So I filled in her dress. I got the flowers and on her hair and I got the moon in. So all I need to do is do her hair, which is about 13%, so about uh, 1800 stitches. And I'm down to three colors. So the three shades of orange that make up her hair. And I'm sure that will go relatively quickly. Um, I'll be able to color complete. And so in October, I'm going to get her finished. I do plan to do the, is it the Bee Goddess? Um, probably next year. Um, I haven't bought the chart yet, but I will. Um, but I do like her. She's got, she's a, like a dark skinned woman, a, a black woman with, um, it's bee themed and a very similar layout. Um, it also has a moon, but I will probably change her. I'll do the B on like a more warmer colour fabric, but I'll do the same count, 35 count. Um, but I'm going to stitch that as a sun. I'm just going to fill in because it feels weird. Like the bees are asleep at night. So I, don't, I will stitch the B lady with um, the B goddess with a sun, not a moon. And one last project this week. Uh, this is my focus project for whatever month we're in, September, and I didn't want to leave it till the last week and then go, oh, I haven't stitched on my focus, which has sort of happened most of the rest of the focus period. Um, so I picked up uh, Quinto Acuto, The Pointed Fifth by Long Dog Samplers. Um, and I love this design, but you know, it's just a hint of what Saga will look like. I am stitching this on 36 count Edinburgh and Copper Beach by Country Stitch using All Silks For You silks, which includes um, PR043, which is the charcoal, PR181 is the variegated, and then January 2022 silks of the month in each of the rows. So that will be the darkest, the next lightest, the next lightest, and the lightest at the top. So each of the windows are the solid color silk or well, the animals are solid and then each of these little 
doofers in here. Um, I'm stitching with the variegated. I haven't decided what I'm going to do here, whether I'm going to use variegated in here. I am in these ones and I am in these ones, but I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing in here or in here yet. Uh, we shall see. I feel like it might be just solid. I don't know. We'll worry about it when we get there. So my aim this month is to try and get this bottom row finished. Um, I had previously stitched um, this one and a bit of this one just to show what the solid colours look like. Um, but yeah, I want to finish this bottom row if I can this month. This is where I am. Um, so in those windows, as I said, the animals get stitched with the colour. So for example, um, and uh, anything that's back stitched will be mostly done in, I don't know, whatever. I've done the butterfly and the copper there. I don't know why I didn't do the B. Oh, that's right. If it's back stitched, it'll be grey. And if it's X's in an animal, it will be in the colour. So that's all back stitched. So it's grey. The butterfly has X's and back stitching. So, um, and people will be black. Um, so I don't know. I'm making it up as I go along. Uh, so we, since you last saw it, I got um, basically ugh, everything. I had done this this bit here had all been done so I picked this up last night and did that bit and that bit and through here so this is the middle is it the middle one yeah this is the middle kind of medallion here so I'm just stitching around that and there's a octopus which I'm quite keen well he's in relief so um you stitch around the octopus and it will be in the variegated silk like the squirrel is and that peacock no it's a thistle <laughs> or thistle or a carnation carnation whatever <laughs> so um yeah i am very happy with that it's a little bit of progress um the charcoal goes pretty quick because i can do data style and just um stitch you know stitch a row and then come back i usually only carry my thread maximum of two spaces so um yeah that's all i got to say so yay um so that's my stitching for the week so um definitely more stitching uh this week than i have stitched for the last few weeks so um, but I also didn't go anywhere and do anything fun, <laughs> so I, didn't, I um, just have, and stayed home yesterday and did gentle, I did slow housework in between stitching sessions, so trying to catch up on some stuff that I haven't, that I've neglected for weeks, but I'm still like getting back spasms, so I can't do everything all the time. I've got two more starts for my hashtag sampler. Mm. Hashtag stash sampler starts. Um, so obviously when I bought draw one for this week, then you'll know what the one for next week is because that's how maths works. So I will draw out what sampler I'll be starting this week. Uh, this one. And we have... Da -da -da. Francis, this is what I can't say. Francis Sweet Love 1827 by Stone Street Stitch Works. That is just, I just can't do that. So that is the sampler that I am kind of going to be stitching. Oh, I'll show you it. One moment. So Francis is, that's what the, I presume the original look like. Um, and I am aiming for it to look kind of similar so i've got a piece of 40 count oyster from country stitch and um it's charted for two colors but i've got three i'm just gonna go a bit random with it um i've got some ring bling um it's got three 
gloomy colours really. It's I love colour but I also sometimes just love really gloomy colours. Uh, so we've got um, Oka, what is it? Okafinoki from Weeks, uh, Sapin Bleu, Bleu from uh, Tom and Lily and Prim Cupboard from Victorian Motto. Um, so and this is going to be I've already charted the changes. I'm personalising this as a kind of um, sampler to remember my paternal grandmother, Elizabeth Beryl Green. Uh, and um, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Which means that next week I'll be starting sampler number eight which is the red and the black two from Prairie Moon. And this has been kitted up for, uh, since 2020. Well, I kitted up Prairie Moon, the red and the black, and the red and black two at the same time. So that's what this looks like. I'm stitching it on the same fabric and similar materials as I stitched number one. So I have uh, lost my card. I've got um, 36 count grandpa's sleeve from XJU Designs with Silks For You PR070. And I've picked a different Victorian motto for the red. So this is um, scrumptious red. So it's a different red, but same fabric. Um, grandpa's sleeve and the silk. Uh, and I personalised Prairie Moon, uh, the first one by putting the date and um, I've lost where they are. Putting the date and my initials in. This one's a bit trickier to do. I did chart them somewhere and I don't know where I put them. We shall worry about that another day. Um, See, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this because this one's a bit more kind of symmetrical and doesn't have gaps so it would mean leaving something out which is fine so potentially I'll leave out like these two little panels and put like my initials on one and the date in the other one um, so yeah I'm looking forward to that so that'll be next week and then I had talked about then a bonus start because we're still in September um, and that will be starting Remember Me by Teresa Kogut. Uh, so I pulled, I haven't done a card for this yet, so I pulled all the called for, apart from the fancy floss, because um, I don't have it. So this is, I pulled 36 count Weathered from number 12 Stitch Co. Um, so I pulled all the called for, and then the two, um, what do you call it? The two... I pulled the DMC for the two that are charted for Classic Colour Works, I think it is. And I exchanged them for just two from my stash. So I've got, instead of 356, Pilgrim Squash by Victorian Motto Shop, which is very similar. Just It's not variegated per se, just has a slight, you know, vintage -y look to it. And instead of 3052, I think, don't quote me, it might be 3051, one of them, I've got Fougere, I've used that before. It's very similar, this is a little bit more variegation, should be plenty with one strand. And then um, I've got the Call for DMC, except I've got one I need to get, I don't have it. Um, but yeah, the Call for look fine, so it's a bunch of browns, which I have bobinated, a darker green, so they're darker green. Oh, there you go. So it was 3052 that this is the substitution for. This is 3051. So the greens look fine. The, um, uh, do, 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 do. I'm missing, oh, that's right, the other. So I think this is the lighter kind of pinky color, pinky salmon-y color. Um, I have pulled a, the darker pulled 355 so it could be that I go a bit darker and rather than using that one I use this one and this one or I'll use all three I might pull an extra color in I'm not sure um, how light this color that I don't have is going to be which is 3064 um, 
and then yeah just a bunch of mm, what's this uh greeny brownie 3021 again pretty inoffensive just lots of browns and beigey colors they all look fine all look fine on there <laughs> so i'm pretty much going with mostly the cord for just um i've got to get one dmc um and then have a look at whether i want to change the main kind of color um it's sort of it's that lovely salmon-y color that has just enough of it not being too pink that i like um but it is very beige and salmon really but i think just on this fabric it's just going to give it a little something different so i'm really looking forward to that so that will be the start that's my bonus start for my um hashtag <laughs> stash up and stuff so it's all from my stash it's just that i didn't have it kitted up before the um exercise yeah that's pretty much it <sighs> that's a lot um what is it now one o'clock apologies and uh, sorry in arrears my apologies if you can hear the occasional banging i have um my sun filters partially down because it's really bright and i don't like being interrogated when i'm on a video but i've also got my um sliders open so um that's what happens when you've got wind or breeze and sun filters they bang a little bit um be nice if they had little clips they clipped into which they don't in hindsight that would have been a good idea but um i don't even know if that's a thing they offer but i don't know whatever uh thanks to um i had another coffee or two bought for me this week through my buy me a coffee link um below thank you very much really appreciate that um also, everyone just is so lovely in your comments, so thank you very much for being good citizens of the planet and being nice and kind and using your powers for good in the doobly-doo. I, yeah, will definitely be back next week with another start to show you and goodness knows what else. Hopefully, I start, I keep improving physically, my health-wise, um, over the next week and I'm planning to have brunch with a friend on Saturday and I'll get there whether I'm hobbling or not. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, but um, that should be fun. It's always good to go out for a meal after payday. I will see you all next week. And um, hope you find time this week to do something that brings you joy. Maybe that's stitching. Hopefully it is. Um, until next week, don't let your needles rust. Ciao.